we are in Pennsylvania at the uh, KOA, the Delaware Water Gap, the one we talked about yesterday. Uh, we are all packed up this morning and getting ready to go. We just showered. I am trying to work with this lovely hair. Uh, if you know, ladies, the water matters. <laughs> Um, this one's not bad, but it is definitely frizzy and we're trying to tame some things down with the straightener. So we will see how it goes. Jim's outside unhooking and then we will be closing all the slides and getting ready to uh, hit the road to our next destination. I like that one. Hey, Joe. Great a few moments later. Yeah, it's because it was a, we won't allow it. The transmission is fucking off, basically. Like it's over this way. Yeah, all the signs go the same way. So stay where, stay behind this one. See this? Is that what you would think? Yeah, probably that right there. Right, that, that lot. stone, whatever road. Right here. We are right here. Look, get off and go up that. It's Wegmans Drive. It's like the first one, so stay in this lane though. And just pick a spot, right? Okay. Yeah, and now it went back to everything is normal. It's an electrical thing, it's exactly what happened last year. Hey, I just had, I'm in Pennsylvania and the RV did the exact same thing. It slammed and then it went into that no ECU data message again and everything that it was doing last year. I did about four miles like that. I got into the parking lot and it made, a no, it made that noise and then it all snapped out of it again. I'm just trying to troubleshoot it. Do you think I should just look at the electrical again, see if the batteries are corroded or something? Okay. All right, I'll take a look. I just wanted to know if there was something quick to check. But Yeah, no, that's weird how it does that. But. All right, thanks, Joe. So we're uh, running into a little bit of an issue. We are just going down uh, the road. And something was going on with the electric. Jim can explain that better, but a little terrifying. All of the speedometers, all of the um, you know, dashboard just kind of went down and it said check engine and we were going through construction zones, a lot happening around here and having to um, find a place to pull over and especially not knowing exactly where you are, you hope that it's going to be a safe place and so I pulled up Google Maps and we were able to find a Wegmans, um, which is very nice. So Jim is now doing some troubleshooting and seeing if we can uh, continue on this trip. Let's see what happens. <laughs> this is so stressful to me. Well, he said last year it was an electrical, he found an electrical connection that was corroded on the frame somewhere in here. Mm -hmm. So he cleaned it off like this and it was fine. It's just an electric, it's nothing mechanical. It's not a broken transmission, but it's electrical. So it's, get, it's not getting a signal. So the transmission jumps into safe mode and doesn't show. See this? Ew. Yeah. This shouldn't be like that. Flat tire. So. Engine failure. 
I think I'm going to call my service thing and see, see what, what happens with that because I don't know what to do, what to do with... I mean, but now I, it's all back to normal, so do you try it? It snapped it out of it, but that's what it did last year. It did that to me too. So do you try it and then... Well, get on the, the highway next... and then I'm stuck inside the highway. You know, that's a piece you don't know what to do, right? You start going down a highway and it does that to you. You got to pull over now on the side of a highway. So I don't know what the answer is. You know? Back in here, he said there was some electrical connections, but... Like how long it would take? It could be hours. We'll see. Well, good thing it's a home on wheels. Right. A few minutes later. Uh, I am on this in a parking lot in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, with my with my RV, and it looks like it's having some type of an electrical issue. Okay, and what's going on with the unit? Uh, we were traveling down the highway, and um, uh, the in check engine light came on briefly, and the gauges started to spike, and then they all returned back uh, to normal, and then uh, I thought what I heard was. Um, Almost, I don't know if we hit a bump or some kind of a slamming sound and then the, the electrical went out on the transmission so the transmission didn't show any gears uh, and then the, the RV itself just kind of went into a limp mode uh, and we were able to drive off the highway and drive into a parking lot of a supermarket but it didn't have any power and the transmission wasn't uh, illuminated at all on the, the gear shift lever for the Allison transmission. A home mechanic that looked at it last year because it had it had happened last year and he found an it was an electrical connection somewhere with the engine of the transmission, some, something like that. So uh, obviously uh, I don't even know where to look. So I don't know if you have mobile technicians that could come at least check it and see if that's the issue. I don't, I don't think it's a mechanical or anything in, in that. I think it's definitely an electrical thing. Excellent, thank you. Our options would be either I can, you know, find you a place that's nearby that you can bring it over to and have them check it out. Or I could possibly, you know, have someone come out there to you and check it out. May not be too much in which they may be able to do depending on what they find. Right. Uh, or if you don't feel safe at all traveling uh, with it, then I mean, I, I can go into a place, but you know, it'll be down for however long. This is uh, no fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we wait. A few moments later. So what's it feel like when you're driving it right now? It feels like it's just won't shift, like you're driving in low gear, um, second gear, because yeah. it won't shift. Because it doesn't want to shift, but it's running fine. It doesn't, you don't hear anything crazy on it, it's just... All the lights and noises you don't want to hear. Which bring us... Here. So far, they've been super accommodating and got us in. We did call before we were coming um, to let them know that we had some issues and they said it would likely be tomorrow morning. Uh, when we arrived, they were so nice and we were um, letting them know we're just trying to get going on our trip here and they said we will get you in we'll have someone you know whether they take the their lunch break squeeze us in and we have a tech out here now um, checking the systems and uh, we'll see what happens but this has been so stressful <laughs> what's supposed to be really fun and uh, an enjoyable trip has been fun but it's also been um, a little stressful and we just hope we can get back on the road soon and keep enjoying what we have going. So we'll see. It is what it is, right? This is all part of uh, 
traveling, RV life, being in a motorhome, uh, towing a vehicle, one thing after another. Always bring your toolkit. This is the real walk of shame. Coming back to an RV that won't move. Let's see what happens. We're packed up, we're in the mini. Um, we're gonna stay in a hotel for the night. So we are dropping the keys off and uh, wish us luck. RV and then get in a hotel room. What the hell's that think? What do you think about that? With your food and your yeah. belongings shoved in the back of a Mini Cooper convertible. Yeah. Bye! We were really nervous we were going to lose all of our food, but thankfully our hotel has a full fridge and we were able to take quite a bit of it. PJ Whalehands, pub and restaurant. back from dinner which was delicious highly recommend if you are stranded and looking for a place to go or you're just uh, visiting this area so now we are relaxing and waiting hopefully tomorrow we'll be hitting the road and can continue on our journey any thoughts <laughs> 